Hi everyone, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you VHS Transition from Red Giant Universe 2.2. VHS Transition will be located in your RG Universe Transitions category of your effects. I'll take this transition and drop it on a cut point between two clips. VHS Transition emulates the look of recording a video over another video on a VHS tape. This is often referred to as a crash record in that the incoming video that is being recorded is not maintaining sync with the previous video. This often results in a loss of synchronization that causes the vertical hole to roll, the saturation to get lost temporarily, lots of video noise and distortion to be introduced, that kind of thing. VHS Transition tries to apply parameters to a lot of this stuff that happens during a crash record. Now before you dive into all the parameters, always know that you can browse the presets by clicking on the Browse Presets button. And as you roll over these, you can see that there's a ton of different examples already provided for you. You can use these as is or as a starting point. Now, starting at the top, we have the transition type. This is simply how it's getting from video A to video B before all of the other noise and color effects are applied. So we can have it cut or wipe or slide down or up. So if I set this to a wipe, we'll see that the video holds in place and simply wipes from clip A to clip B. Next, we have the tape noise section, which introduces noise prints captured from real VHS tapes. Now, how much noise is being applied to the original clip is obviously defined by the tape noise slider, but take note that this can actually be pushed over 100 if you're really looking to overdrive the tape noise that's being applied to your video. I'm gonna click on reset real quick. The tape distortion works hand in hand with the tape noise. What the plugin does is look at the luminance of the tape noise and apply a distortion map based on the tape noise. So if I turn up this tape noise quite a bit, you'll see the video distort along the contours of the tape noise. In addition to the captured noise prints, there's a random noise. This is actually a procedural noise that's added on top of everything else. So it allows you to get your video quite noisy during the transition. If I park this at the halfway point in the transition, you'll see that there's a border in between the two clips. This is the stroke, and you'll find the controls for this in the stroke section where we can turn it on or off with enable stroke. And we can change the overall width of it as well as the color. Just like in the VHS effect, you'll see this rolling wrinkle right here is still there, and we can enable or disable this by checking the checkbox there as well as adjusting the size. Next, I'd like to talk about the color controls, which is a fairly large section that we'll twirl open and take a look at here. I'm gonna to jump to a different example here. In fact, let me select this and set the transition type to a cut. Now the color controls are largely taken from the VHS effect, but the big difference is that these are the maximum values that the transition will go to at the peak of the transition. So, all of these values, so the red channel, green channel, and blue channel offsets, start at zero and travel to the offset. This actually results in a very realistic look because it's not actually crossfading the image back and forth between the original and color corrected version. It's actually animating and sliding each individual component in and out of place. So if I go to, let's say right here, we have red, green, and blue offsets that we can control as well as an overall chroma offset. So if I take this chroma offset and I shift this, let's say, negative 50, we can see we've got quite a bit of channel separation going on here. And in fact, let me move the blue channel over there and we'll even boost the saturation to 200%. So we have quite a bit of color error going on. But if I slide this all the way back or let's say move forward, to the end of the transition, we'll see that the individual channels and the overall chroma all slide back into place to get to the B clip. And the same happens at the start of the clip, going back to the original clip A. Also note that the saturation can go all the way down to zero, which is a common thing that happens during a crash record, and also can go into a negative direction. This will actually invert the hue. Frame jitter is pretty straightforward. It adds a little bit of jitter to the frame as it travels. 
skew is actually a new parameter. So if I set this to, let's say, 0.2, it will actually take the video frame and twist it and contort it. This will actually ease in and out. Lastly, because we are working with noise prints that actually do have color in them, we've added the option for a monochrome look. So this will simply remove the color from everything in the video, including the noise prints. And at the very bottom, we have a frame style, and this allows you to set this to 4x3. If you are using a 4x3 source, and you'd like the noise to be cropped from the edges. And that is an overview of VHS Transition, found in Red Giant Universe 2.2. My name is Harry Frank. We'll see you next time.